Hey fellow Force users, what is up? It's Jasmine, the Ahsoka Tano fan, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So guys, today's a very exciting day because as you know, Book of Boba Fett just dropped and of course we've been waiting a year for this uh, series to come so I am so excited. I think it's going to be a great one. I can't wait to see Boba and Fennec in action. I think this series will show us how they actually became close and became the iconic duo that they are. And I'm also looking forward to seeing more of Boba's backstory and perhaps what he was up to after Return of the Jedi and then before his appearance in The Mandalorian. You know obviously that Fennec was in The Bad Batch, um, which is actually my shirt today. In season two of The Bad Batch, if we see Boba Fett make an appearance, I wonder if we're gonna see them meet there as well um, and if there's gonna be any reference to The Bad Batch in this series, right? And speaking of Bad Batch references, I know we talked about this a lot before, is it possible we're gonna see any members of The Bad Batch make their live action debut in the series. One big character people have talked about is Omega and whether or not we could see her, I think it's very possible because we know obviously that Boba and Omega are, you know, technically brother and sister and they're both the last remaining clones with Jango's pure DNA. Boba being the alpha or the first and then Omega being the last. Are we going to see any other familiar faces like Cad Bane or any Rebels characters like Hera? And then of course, are we going to see any characters from The Mandalorian make an appearance? like Mando or Grogu, um, Gideon, because obviously in the same timeline, so that's also a possibility. I noticed the first episode is called Chapter One. It's kind of mirroring how the Mandalorian uh, titled their episodes as well. They use chapters. And then the synopsis reads, Boba Fett holds court. So nice and short and sweet. Uh, something tells me that it's not gonna be any ordinary court proceeding. <laughs> if I know Boba, then probably shit's gonna go down. Let's check out the episode, guys, and see what's in store for us. Also, you have to forgive me for how I sound. To be honest, I actually have COVID right now. It's definitely been not that fun of a week, but um, I couldn't miss the premiere of Book of Boba. <laughs> so just kind of be patient with me because I'm very kind of congested. And also one of the symptoms is fatigue and brain fog, and I kind of have both those things. So. Um, hopefully like, I don't miss anything, you know, important while I'm watching, uh, but yeah, just bear with me a little bit. So nice to see the Lucasfilm logo. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. Right on Tatooine. So I wonder, are we going to see the post credit scene from The Mandalorian Season 2 again, where he kills Bib Fortuna, or is the series going to take place after that? Mm. He's in uh, the Bacta tank. Camino. Mm -hmm. Battle of Genosis. Oh, is he inside the Sarlacc pit? <laughs> oh my gosh. How the hell does he get out of there with his jetpack, I guess? Ew. Oh, he used, this to, he used it to breathe. Very smart. Oh. I love how they're revisiting a bunch of the Star Wars scenes, you know? From Return of the Jedi, then we saw Attack of the Clones, you know, Battle of Genosis. Oh, are these these, like, um, what are they called again? The little guys? So that's how they got his armor that he tries to retrieve in The Mandalorian, right? I hope they at least help him. That's just gonna leave him there, are they? The Jawas. There's not a single Star Wars installment where these guys aren't a pain in the ass. <laughs> Tusken Raiders? Right, because when we first saw Boba in The Mandalorian Season 2, like not, he didn't have any lines, but we just saw him kind of standing in, off in the distance, right? I think he was wearing one of the Tusken Raiders uniforms. Taking him prisoner? Damn. What is that? Damn. He really went through hell, eh? Maybe Fennec helps him somehow. And that's why he is indebted to her and then he helps her later on. Kind of random, but that almost reminds me of uh, the Clone Wars, a friend in need. When the Death Watch dragged Ahsoka back to camp. So mean, man. Okay. Stranger in a strange land. Yeah, they're definitely mirroring Mandalorian the way they introduced the title of the episode. Oh, it's a kid. 
Why are they hitting him? Damn. Can't you see the guy who's going through a lot? Man, they'd be very lucky if he doesn't just kill them all as soon as he's out of there. Pull a Anakin. Oh, another prisoner. Oh. Jeez. Oh, shit. What if he goes to eat the other guy? Hold on. Oh. Good. Oh, he's using his teeth to cut free, right? Oh my gosh! What a snitch! I think that guy's thinking something. I think that man and woman look like they're the leaders of the tribe. I'm still trying to figure out if they become allies and that's how he's able to get their clothing later or if he kills them and then takes it. No. Why are they being so mean to him? Damn. We just went grainy all of a sudden. Fennec! <laughs> Hmm. Looks much better now than he did then. <laughs> Find up to pay respects. I'll let them know you're on your way. Respects. Respects to him or respects to somebody who died? Hmm, nice. Tamir Morrison looks really good. <laughs> so I guess the answer is my first question. Bib Fortuna's already dead. <laughs> yeah, so true. Hmm, sounds like a threat. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so no gifts. Mm-hmm. What's this guy's deal? <laughs> Fennec's just ready to kill him already. <laughs> so basically they're just gonna let him live. That's the tribute they're giving to the mirror. <laughs> Damn. Kind of cold. He won't do it, I don't think. She disagrees. Mm, there she is, Fennec with the helmet. I really like her outfit. <laughs> oh, he removes his helmet in public? Why was I thinking he wasn't... He didn't do that. Yeah, I remember her from the trailer. Master Assassin. Not a bad title. <laughs> How did anyone hear that quiet clap? Is she flirting with him? I feel like she kind of was. <laughs> Must be nice being a big time crime boss. Oh! Assassins already. Now, did that lady call them? Oh, the job was again. Oh my gosh. When I saw this part in the trailer, I didn't think it'd be so soon. Damn. It's not really a fair fight, is it? Their shields are too strong. Oh, the henchmen are helping. See, I want to know who called them. It definitely seems like a setup. Oh, shoot. Damn. Yep. Nice kick, Fennec. Oh. They have some strong armor. Fennec's not done. I think she's going after them. Oh. Did he just... Yep, he killed him. I think their days are numbered. 
So who hired these assassins? I think it's gonna be one of the, like, the questions of the season. Mm -mm. Yeah, this is probably nothing for her. I mean, she fought Cad Bane before. <laughs> Yeah. In there a lot, eh? So every time he goes in there, he has these dreams, like the flashbacks. Is that the little snitch? You both could have been free had you not said anything. Oh, are they both chained to each other's ankles? Ankles? Yeah, I think so. That's a kid, right? I feel like they should be able to take it. Kind of random, but Tamira has very nice teeth. <laughs> hmm. So why did the Tuscan Raider take him there? I feel like a lot of money went into the show. Even that pet is CGI, right? Dig a hole? That was never a good sign. Oh, I thought he wanted them to dig a hole, like, for themselves. I don't think that they're going to get the water, though. <laughs> Has Boa found one yet? I don't know. He's going to drink it, isn't he? Oh, this kid's a little brat, eh? Well, now would be a good time to escape. I think I would try and disarm the child, and then I'd probably have to knock this guy out too, before he snitches again. <laughs> You're still trusting him, Boba? <laughs> what is that? Is that, like, something that's gonna wake up, or...? Yeah! Damn it! <laughs> oh no! He's not even gonna have a chance to redeem himself. Is that a Rancor? What is that? See, we knew, like, there always has to be a sand creature. Even in The Mandalorian, it was like that, too. <laughs> oh, damn. <gasps> oh, shoot. I'm pretty sure the Rodian's dead. Damn. Oh, damn. It's okay, Boba. You escaped one sand creature. You can escape another one. <laughs> this thing is a weird looking. Hmm. Oh, so maybe the child will go back and tell his tribe that Boba rescued him. Maybe that's how they'll be allies? Uh-huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no way they can keep him a prisoner after this. Mm-hmm. Oh no. No, that's the end. <laughs> oh, it's also written by John Favreau and created by him. Did I know that? And Dave Filoni. Those two are on fire, man. I wonder if they filmed this in the dome also, the way they filmed um, The Mandalorian. I forget what the technology is called, but Okay, um, to be honest with you, I really enjoyed that actually. I'm kind of sad that it's over. There's lots I liked about it. I liked how it kind of brought us back to a couple of the Star Wars movies, like Return of the Jedi. We got to see what happened with him in the Sarlacc pit and how he made it out because that was obviously one of the things I was wondering if the series would show us. And I guess, you know, they kind of have to show us that. And then, of course, we also saw him have a flashback to Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, at the end of the Battle of Genosis when, you know, Jango Fett was killed by Mace Windu. It felt really like it was bringing all the Star Wars movies together, or at least those Star Wars movies. I liked how they showed us the whole experience he had being held prisoner by the Tusken Raiders. I think it just shows Boba as being somebody that is able to beat the odds. When you see someone go through what he went through, and now you see him as a crime lord, you know, having taken Jabba's spot, you kind of you really feel like he's earned his place there. You know, I'm getting to see how he worked his way up there and how he fought for survival. I mentioned during my reaction as well, but in The Mandalorian, when we first see a glimpse of Boba, he's seen wearing um, Tusken Raider uh, clothing. You now make sense because he was taken prisoner by them and it looks like he ends up becoming their ally because he's the one that defeated the creature. I like how they explain that part of the story. And even Boba being in the back to tank reminds me a lot of Vader as well. I think it's such a crucial element to the Star Wars story that we don't see a lot of the healing process, right? And while he's in there, not only is he healing his physical wounds, but also, I think he's trying to heal his mind, which is why he kind of keeps having those flashbacks. All the while, we're getting to see what happened to him right after Return of the Jedi. So it's kind of telling a story 
while also showing us what his healing process is like, both physically and mentally. I like seeing him as a crime boss, you know, um, taking over Jabba the Hutt. He mentions things like he plans to rule with respect, you know, he doesn't want to torture or anything like that. It makes him more of an admirable character because he is after the power and he is trying to establish respect, but he's trying to go about it um, in a different way than other crime bosses like Jabba the Hutt. But I think it's not quite that easy. It's not long into the episode where we see assassins sent after both he and Fennec. And I think the question as to who hired the assassins is probably going to be a big plot point in the story. I suspect that, um, I can't remember her name, the woman, the woman at the cantina, the Twi'lek, I suspect she might have had something to do with it because as soon as they left her place, all of a sudden the assassins were there, right? So someone must have tipped them off. Actually, it's possible the mayor was even behind um, sending the assassins after them, you know, maybe to kind of teach them a lesson for not paying him what he wanted them to. The whole meeting they had, or I think they referred to it as court in the synopsis, of all the people offering different tributes, I think those are all potential suspects in terms of who hired the assassins. I think that's kind of meant to give us a glimpse at everybody who could potentially be coming for Boba's throne. All those people have the potential to be allies or enemies, right? And that's the problem with, with this kind of world and this kind of life is somebody's always after your throne. Just as Boba was after Jabba's throne, someone else is after his. Is he going to be able to rule the way that he wants to? Or is he going to kind of have to take Fennec's advice and rule with a little bit more fear, right? I brought the show up before on my channel in the past, but is a similar thing in Queen of the South, one of the cartel bosses. She doesn't want to rule with that much fear and that much violence, but then it's hard because people are constantly always after her power, right? So eventually she kind of has to adjust the way she rules. And so I think that um, we might see Boba do something similar in that sense as well. I of course love seeing Fennec again. Um, you saw that when Boba was in the back of the tank, she referred to him as boss. We already see her working alongside him, you know, um, with him being the boss. I'm just curious to see now a little bit more about her backstory and how they got to that point. In The Mandalorian, Boba is the one who found her and brought her back to life after she was killed. So I just kind of want to know what made them get to that point, right? As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, we do see Fennec make an appearance in The Bad Batch. We haven't yet seen Boba, so it's possible in season two of The Bad Batch we'll see Boba make an appearance, we'll see him meet Fennec, and that'll probably explain how the two of them know each other and how they've gotten to be so close. It's something I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more about Fennec's backstory, and you know, she had her uh, good moments in this episode. She's just super badass. Her title is even called Master Assassin, I believe is what Boba referred to her as. It should be interesting to see how the two of them do ruling Tatooine together. But yeah, guys, overall, it was um, really well done. I love where the story's going so far. I can't wait to see the next episode. Um, you guys let me know what you thought down below in the comments as always. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, guys. And I will see you next week for an all-new episode of Book of Boba Fett. Until next time, guys, take care and see you soon.